What's going on folks, j here bringing you another fantastic gameplay commentary and today we are going to be doing a division breakdown. Exactly what it is, what I think about it, and should you buy it. So, before we get started, go ahead and enjoy the sweet B-roll. The first half of today's video will be some PvE and the second half of today's video will be some PvP. So we'll get both sides, both spectrums, so you can get a well-rounded perspective as to what's going on in the world of The Division. Now, let's get started. In 2001, an operation known as Dark Winter was launched, which was a real-world exercise that tested the emergency response to a bioterror attack on the United States. This simulation spiraled out of control within a few days and predicted that a breakdown in essential institutions, civil disorder, and massive civilian casualties would soon occur. In 2007, a new presidential directive was secretly signed that was put into law. This executive order, also known as Directive 51, was created to respond to a national crisis such as the Dark Winter. Rumors such as sleeper cells, shadow agencies, and covert operations relating to the directive was spread. Three weeks before the events of the division on November 23rd, the day known as Black Friday, a virus began spreading through banknotes that started to spread through human skin, food, and toys, causing millions of people to become infected. Within five days, the virus caused the United States to break down and fall apart. Day one, hospitals will reach capacity. Panic will strike. Day two, quarantine zones will be established. Resources will be rationed, and transport will go into lockdown. Day three, international trade will stop. The oil will dry up. The stock market will collapse. Day 4, the power will fall, shelves will be empty, taps will run dry, and once hunger and despair take hold, people will do anything to survive. By day 5, everyone is a potential threat. Now let's go ahead and loosely discuss some key components involved in this game, such as gameplay, locations, weapons, gear, abilities, talents, perks, factions. There's a lot going on in this game and a lot need to be covered. The player will be playing as a division agent from the Strategic Homeland Division, also known as SHD. Playing throughout New York City, securing multiple locations and having the ability to do side missions. The player will have to scavenge for their food, ammo and supplies in order to survive. The food and water gives players boosts for a limited time. Online connection is required but you do not have to join a squad or with other players. The Division is a third person tactical shooter cover-to-cover -cover gameplay which allows players to be stealthy and to be more tactical in combat. This game has a maximum squad count of four. As far as the locations go, there will be multiple locations around New York City to explore. In the division, areas are separated into districts. There are 16 districts with six dark zone districts on launch. Moving on to the weapons and gear, the player will have a variety of weapons to use. Players can have a primary, a secondary, and a sidearm equipped all at the same time. Some of these weapons include a basic assault rifles, light machine guns, submachine guns, pistols, shotguns, and marksman rifles. Moving on over to gear, players have the ability to equip six different gears and six different unique slots. You have backpacks, gloves, body armor, knee pads, holsters, and masks. Each of these gears pieces has a level, a rarity, also known as AR, for armor rating. This AR shows how much damage will be mitigated when wearing the gear. The AR adds up from each piece of gear that is equipped. The higher the rarity, the better the base stats will be. Now this next portion may be rather vague due to the fact of we really don't have a lot of information about it. So, as far as abilities go, the player will have a variety of skills, talents, and perks enhancing their gameplay experience. These skills will help make each character unique. Skills may be changed during combat as well. As far as skills go, skills are active abilities that are used by the player and then will recharge before their next use. Talents are passive abilities that give the player a persistent bonus. Talents can be improved as the player's level increases. And perks. Perks are abilities which are always active and give player benefits in certain areas when achieved and unlocked. Now let's go ahead and discuss some of the factions that will be featured in the division. 
Players will encounter different factions and groups throughout the game. Each enemy faction has different types of enemies. Now, I will say that I am going to be covering each of these factions in depth and in detail in my very next video, so be sure to go ahead and subscribe before you forget. Now, the first faction, as we know, the Division Agents. That will be our faction. Moving on to the next one, the Cleaners and the Rikers. These two factions have been featured in the closed beta. Now, whether they're going to be a primary faction or just a random faction that you just come across that's going to be a territorial faction, I do not know how these factions are going to work. I don't know if they just have a mind of their own or they just, you know, wander and do their own thing or if they're territorial based on the map and the map location. Moving on to the other four factions, we have the CERA faction. We also have the Rioters faction and the Joint Task Force faction. And the last faction that has been recently discovered in a Easter egg that was featured on a broadcast featured in the beta, the Last Man Battalion faction. So, like I said, I am going to discuss all seven of these factions in detail and in depth in my next video. Alright, let's go ahead and move on to the Dark Zone. Now, when playing solo or in a group in Tom Clancy's The Division, players will have the opportunity to enter the Dark Zone, areas where the virus has taken the biggest toll. Here the player will find other players, groups of players, and can engage in PvP or PvE combat. Players can enter the Dark Zone through certain checkpoint gateways and by climbing over specific walls near the Dark Zone. The loot in the Dark Zone is some of the best acquired in the game due to the fact that it is abandoned JTF military gear. Players will lose any high-end gear they pick up in the Dark Zone if they are killed while carrying the gear before extracting it via helicopter. The Dark Zone is designed to have up to 24 players in any instance at one time. Now, let's go ahead and cover some other basic essentials that's being implemented in The Division. For starters, the NPCs, or just basic people. In the Division, agents will encounter many different NPCs or non-playable characters. Some NPCs play a bigger role in the story than others, but these players can help or hinder the Division agents. Let's move on to customization. Now, customizations, uh, agents will be able to customize different aspects of their character and gear in the division. Players can customize their looks, their gear, and how their weapons look and handle. One example would be the ability to change an item with the weapons mod. Weapons change in appearance in game based on the mod applied, in other words, scopes, grips, magazines, and paint. Other ways include various performance enhancing consumables such as food, water, or soda, as well as choosing different talents and the ability to change them on the fly based on the player's personal preference. Players can also choose their gender, their body type, facial features, and appearance and outfit at the beginning of the game. Now I know we've covered a lot here in the past 9 minutes, but we're almost done. Let's go ahead and finish up covering the loot, the crafting, and the social hub systems. There's a rarity based loot system within the game. Loot can be found when enemies are killed or in many locations all over New York City. However, not all enemies will drop loot when killed. Tougher characters will usually drop better quality loot. The loot ranking is as follows, with 5 being the highest. Number 1, Warm. Number 2, which is Green, Standard. Number 3, which is Blue, Specialized. Number 4, which is Purple, Superior. And number 5, which is Yellow, High End. The higher the rarity, the better the item's statistics are. Now the loot system will also be another vague explanation. The player will have the ability to craft items in the division, crafting various weapons and equipment for themselves or other fellow agents, like attachments for their weapon systems. Unfortunately, we did not get to see the crafting system in the closed beta, but hopefully here in the near future, we'll get to see and experience some of it firsthand. And in conclusion, the social hubs. Tom Clancy's The Division will have certain areas in New York City where players can interact with each other. These are safe zones where no weapons or skills can be used. They are referred to as hubs. Chelsea Pier is one of the explorable hubs at the beginning of the player's campaign in New York City. 
Now that is pretty much, in a nutshell, Tom Clancy's The Division fully explained in depth. Now, let's go ahead and segue and wrap up this video with my thoughts and my impressions of the beta that was released here a couple of weeks ago. Before I get into my thoughts and impressions, there is a rumor circulating that an open beta will be featured and released around February 16th. So that is next week. And God, I pray for an open beta because I'll go ahead and say it now. Tom Clancy's The Division and Uncharted 4 will be the only games that I'm going to be playing for the entire year of 2016. Believe that. Believe that shit right there. I'm not lying. The beta literally took over my life. I have about, I, I think I think I made it about 20 hours into the Tom Clancy's The Division beta and had a blast, an absolute blast. I tried to upload as much content as I could to you guys. There were some intense butthole puckering moments. There were some laugh out loud shenanigans. I had such a good time playing the beta with people such as Undead Warrior, Eris Menace, Nergear. It's just a blast. I can't stress to you guys how much fun the beta was. So I am really, really crossing my fingers that an open beta will be released to the public so everybody out there can get their hands on it. Because it only makes sense to me that Ubisoft would release a short open window for all of the consumers to get their hands on this game because this game is going to potentially be a groundbreaking game a lot of people have been comparing it to destiny i can agree with that on some levels i can agree how the division is being compared to destiny now i'm not agreeing to the fact that uh yes the let's say the raids in destiny I don't think you're going to get any experience like that ever in Tom Clancy's The Division. Will we have experiences close to that? Yes, sure, sure we will. Now as far as comparing the two, the only thing I can see comparable are the loot systems and the progression systems and maybe the social atmosphere, the towers or the social hubs, whatever you want to call it. As far as should you buy Tom Clancy's The Division? I think you should. I will be buying it. Actually, I'm not buying it. Undead Warrior is hooking it up. He fucking rocks. He's the best. You fucking rock, Undead. You're the best, man. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up with this moment of zen. Take it easy, guys. Be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, all that happy horse shit. Peace out, bitches! Get her out of here.